Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Coming at you as I love to do every weekday afternoon from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over the airwaves of Sirius XM. Mad Dog Sports Radio, the number to call up as always is 888-MAD-DOG-6. That's 888-623-3646. Got a lot of stuff coming your way today. Got some preseason games to touch on based on what we saw last night from the Denver Broncos, from the New York Jets, certainly from the Philadelphia Eagles, from the Jacksonville Jaguars even. Uh, definitely talk about that. Got the Dallas decal issue. The NFL denied the Dallas Cowboys' request to have decals on their helmet, essentially commemorating uh, the five police officers killed in Dallas. That horrific crime by that gunman who should be, you know, you know, thrown under the jail for crying out loud, assuming he was alive. Uh, definitely talk about that. Uh, we are going to talk about a lot of NBA stuff as well. Got to get into Tim Tebow just a little bit because Buck Show Walter uh, brought him up, manager for the Baltimore Orioles. Got to get into A-Rod a little bit because tonight is his last game. But the first order of business to get into is LeBron James because I don't know if y'all know the news. LeBron James signed a three-year, $100 million contract extension with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't know whether it was his Facebook, his Instagram, his Twitter. I don't know where the hell it was. Uh, but obviously, he gave it to the folks out there. He gave it to them straight, uh, let them know that he was staying in Cleveland for another couple of years to come at the very least. Uh, LeBron James, scheduled to make about $31 million, is the highest paid player in the NBA for the first time in his illustrious career. Let's be clear about something. Number one, LeBron James deserved this money. Number two, LeBron James deserved more than this money. Let's be clear about that. LeBron James at $31 million is still underpaid. Let's make sure we're clear. He's still underpaid. If LeBron James was getting paid $50 million, I'd still say he's underpaid. You know why? Because it's about the revenue he generates, not just the championships, not just the fact that he's the best player in the world. You walk through the turnstiles to watch LeBron James. See, you could be great. You could be a Hall of Famer. You can even be a champion and don't deserve that much money simply because you don't generate that level of revenue. Perfect example would be Tim Duncan. Absolutely, positively the greatest power forward in the history of basketball. Better than Karl Malone. Better than Kevin McHale. The greatest power forward in the history of basketball. But if you didn't see Tim Duncan, did you really miss him? The answer to that would be no. Because he was Tim Duncan. Nondescript, non-assuming didn't wow you with anything that made you want to pay money just to walk through the turnstiles to see him play. Mad respect for him. Reverence towards him. Consummate professional. Superstar player in terms of talent and production. But he wasn't box office. He wasn't box office. LeBron is a different beast. LeBron has been box office for years. LeBron deserved to be the best player in the world for years. And the fact that it's validated right now is a beautiful thing for him. He deserves this money. He deserves more than this money. What he means to that local economy in Cleveland, what he means to the game of basketball, what he means to sports as the preeminent global iconic athlete, there is no doubt that he deserved it. Shouldn't have been that hard, but that doesn't mean that Rich Paul, his agent, doesn't deserve credit for negotiating this deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I'm glad LeBron got his money now because let me tell you something. This collective bargaining negotiation that is forthcoming because you know both sides, the Players Association and the league, have a right to back out of the deal as of this December, which they likely will do. And there will be a CBA renegotiation taking place next summer. You don't know what's going to happen with the owners. You don't know what's going to happen with the players. Keep this in mind. Even though the television take for the NBA went from $900 million to $2.2 billion, which explains the exorbitant salaries that we saw this summer. How do y'all feel about this? And I want to emphasize and preface my statements by saying all of these players could play. All of these players that I'm about to mention deserve a lot of money. All of these players 
warrant our respect. All of them. But can we be real about something? Did Mike Conley Jr., I'm sorry, did Mike Conley deserve $153 million? $153 million. Never played in the NBA Finals. I think we all agree in today's economy that James Harden deserves $118 million because he's a superstar, you know, in terms of an uh, offensive player. And you in Houston, you walk through the turnstiles to see uh, James Harden dance on people. Anthony Davis is definitely going to be worth every penny because he's the only thing you've got in New Orleans. But $145 million is $145 million, especially for a dude that didn't make the playoffs. What about DeMar DeRozan? I know the Toronto just went to the Eastern Conference Finals, but $139 million? What about Bradley Beal? Did we see Washington in the playoffs this year? I don't recall. I don't think so. And by, last time I checked, isn't John Wall a star of that team? So why is John Wall at 80 plus and Bradley Beal is at $128 million? By the way, he's got a minute's restrictions where he's not going to be able to play but about 30 minutes a night. I'm not saying that's etched in stone. I'm saying those are the kind of things you're hearing about him. So taking all of that thing, all of that into consideration, how in the hell is anybody going to even think to complain about LeBron James getting a three-year, $100 million deal? It's clear he deserves more. And when you consider the fact that he's a three-time champion, that he's been in six consecutive NBA finals, that he'd ever teach you with effort or his commitment to excellence, and that he's constantly striving to be the best, even when he doesn't pull it off, can you deny that that, Coupled with his box office appeal. Warrants anything less than what he's earning? I think you know better. I think you all understand this. And I think that we all know that LeBron James is grossly underpaid. I personally think that LeBron James, and I've heard that LeBron James got a side deal where he's going to get an ownership stake in the Cleveland Cavaliers once his career is over. I think he should. By the way, Dan Gilbert, the owner for the Cleveland Cavaliers, He's got something to do with that casino deal in Ohio. How much you want to make a bet? LeBron James might be a part of that too. Because it wouldn't be that. That wouldn't have happened if LeBron James hadn't returned to Cleveland. If LeBron James had not returned to Cleveland, I don't think they'd get a casino deal. Dan Gilbert, that is. Do you have any idea what LeBron James has done for the local economy? Do you have any idea what LeBron James has done for Dan Gilbert? Do you have any idea what LeBron James has done for the city of Cleveland and the northern Ohio area? LeBron James is worth over a billion dollars. As far as I'm concerned, he's underpaid. And by the way, when Steph Curry comes up, Steph Curry might get $200 million. He'll deserve it. He's box office. He's box office. But let me tell you what the bad part about all of this is. We got to reach a point where we ask ourselves this question. When is enough enough? Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm all for players getting their money. All for it. I love it. If you deserve it. See, what I don't want to see are dudes getting $150 million that's worth half that. What I don't want to see are these exorbitant prices becoming more and more exorbitant with a lack of production. What I don't want, and you know why I don't want to see it? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm concerned about the disincentive it provides to win, to be champions. What am I talking about? Did you see the quote from Carmelo Anthony? Did you see how ESPN's very own Mark Stein quoted Mark uh, Carmelo Anthony? As saying that in the end, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the direct quote right in front of me right now. He said that in the end, if he never wins a championship, but he has three gold medals, he would look at his career as very successful. Now, see, this is hard for me. And I spoke about this on First Take this morning on ESPN2 with my man Max Kellerman. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to understand something. Carmelo Anthony's my man. I got nothing but love for him. We ain't, hey, listen, none of these athletes going to have me 
being there for Thanksgiving dinner and exchanging Christmas gifts with them. It ain't down. It ain't, it ain't like that. When I tell you I love them, what I mean by that is I love who they are. I love what they represent as people. And I'll vouch for Carmelo Anthony to the end. He's a good brother. But let me tell you why I'm so pissed off at him today. Because that quote that he gave undermines everything I know him to be. And by the way, I see people on social media telling me to fire my barber. Could you do me a favor? Kick rocks and shut the hell up. I'm 48 years old. I'm approaching 50. It's over. I know. I ain't walking around like LeBron at age 31 with a receding hairline. I'm almost 50. I have an excuse. What the hell is y'all excuse? I got social media up in front of me. I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry I got distracted. By the way, I look pretty damn good because the ladies tell me so all the time. I'm going to flow with that rather than what fellas are telling me about how I look. I'm sorry I don't go that way. Not that there's anything wrong with those who do. I'm liberal in that regard. Live and let live. It ain't my flavor, but for those it is, more power to you. Back to basketball. Carmelo Anthony saying that says a few things. Number one, keep in mind that what it really, really says is that you either don't believe in the Knicks or you don't believe in yourself. Because the statement that he made about looking back on his career and seeing himself as a success with gold medals as opposed to NBA titles reeks of someone who either doesn't believe in his team or doesn't believe in himself. And I refuse to believe that Carmelo Anthony doesn't believe in himself. So here we are. Carmelo Anthony makes a statement like that while playing in the Olympics, being en route, having just saved a day against Australia the other day when he dropped 30 on nine three-pointers, 31 actually. Listen, LeBron, Carmelo Anthony's talking about gold medals or gold medals. Look, man. My career will still be a success. I won a national championship. I will have won three gold medals. I'll definitely look at my career as a success. Ladies and gentlemen, Carmelo Anthony might very well be right. If you retired and you're looking back, reflecting upon things that were, but Carmelo Anthony is still playing. He still has about four or five years left in his career. What the hell are you doing making a statement like that? For what? Because you don't believe you're going to win? Because you don't believe your team can win? Because you're questioning whether or not you're going to be able to get it done? What is it? What were you thinking? Do y'all not see the problem? Donald Finley is absolutely right on social media. He's basically settling. I can't believe it. Carmelo Anthony is one of the greatest offensive players of this generation. With Derrick Rose coming into town and Joe King Noah and Christos Porzingis as your, as, your, as, your, as your teammate along with Courtney Lee, even though you should have been Dwayne Wade, it's the Eastern Conference other than Cleveland. Who definitively can't you beat? And if you get to a conference finals and Cleveland is the team that you're going up against, who has the potential to be LeBron's kryptonite? Because you're big enough, strong enough, and gifted enough to give it to him. That would be mellow. Why the hell are you making a statement like that? Especially publicly. Why? Why? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And I'm just wondering. Not only what was he thinking. I'm wondering why should Nick fans support this team if your resident star has got that kind of attitude? Here's another thing, and it's a macro picture that I'm going to paint. LeBron gets $100 million. And I'm not in any way implying that players won't work hard and won't play hard. But if Mike Conley Jr. is going to get 153, if Damian Lillard is going to get 150, if, if, if Anthony Davis is going to get 145, if DeMar DeRozan is going to get 139, if Bradley Beal is going to get 128, 
If Melo's going to get 122, and you've never won anything, where's the incentive to commit yourself to winning? See, I'm not questioning the resolve of any of these, especially a brother like Damian Lillard. That brother's a rough rider. Anthony Davis is a, is, a, is a superstar in the making. Bradley Beal can really, really play when healthy. I'm not questioning any of these guys' heart. I'm not questioning their abilities. What I'm asking is a generic question. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to work. We go to work and we work our tails off every day. Would the urgency really, really be there if no matter what we did, we got paid and we were set for life? See, that's the question. Because that's the question that we have to ask as we look forward to it. This is why you should love LeBron. Because LeBron makes money off the court better than any basketball player in the game. LeBron James has monetized his brand exponentially. And as a result, look at what it's done for him. Yet he's still going to the finals every year. LeBron James was drafted in 2003 as the number one overall pick. The man who should have been number two. But Joe Dumas had Tayshaun Prince and wanted a center instead. A decision he rules the day of to this very day. He picks Darko Milicic and the next thing you know, the Denver Nuggets have Mello at number three. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that LeBron at number one, Mello at number three, Bosch at number four, D. Wade at number five, to Toronto and Miami, respectively. The top five picks in the NBA draft. Do you realize that Carmelo Anthony is more synonymous with Darko Milicic than he is with those three? LeBron James has three rings. D. Wade has three. Chris Bosh has two. And the reason why I bring that up, even though they played together, is because it was never supposed to be Chris Bosh. It was Melo who was supposed to go to South Beach with LeBron and D. Wade. But instead of signing... A deal with an opt-out after three years that would have led him to be a free agent in 2010. Mello, when he signed this deal back in 06 07 with Denver, his extension wanted all five years guaranteed at 80 million. D Way, LeBron, and Bosch were willing to have an out after three years that netted them over 50, only 50 to 55 million at the time. Mello wanted his money. They wanted their freedom. They bet on themselves. Melo did it. They end up with titles. Melo did not. That's why I said he's more synonymous with Darko. Certainly not talent wise because Darko ain't in this class. But do you realize the magnitude of that? Do you realize what that means? Do you realize what kind of impact that, that has had on the career of Carmelo Anthony? All of them have been in the league for 13 years. Chris Bosh and D. Wade. Chris Bosh, four straight NBA Finals. D. Wade, five NBA Finals appearances overall. LeBron James, seven NBA Finals appearances overall. Carmelo Anthony, zero. Not one appearance in an NBA Finals, despite the star that he is. Fair enough, because he didn't play on contenders the way they did. But here's the thing. He had a chance to, not just once, but twice, and passed up on it for the money. So when you take all of that into consideration, I know who Melo is. I know what he's made of. I believe in his brother's talent. I believe you put Melo in a pivotal final situation, you will see a superstar of the highest order because that brother got hard. He ain't never been scared of the moment. The problem is you got to care enough about getting to that moment to actually get there. That's what I'm struggling with right now. Because I know what Melo is. I know what he can be. But I think he's giving people ammunition to beat him down. And that breaks my heart because I got love for the brother. 
but I'm looking at an NBA that's getting 2.2 billion a year from television rights alone. Obviously forced to pay these players because of it. And I'm wondering if Melo is a symptom of a bigger issue. And that is simply this. Is there an incentive for these guys to even win anymore when you're getting paid this amount of money? LeBron's career screams, yes, there is always that incentive. Melo's, not so much. And we ain't even get to the Conleys and everybody else of the world. Triple Eight Mad Dog Six is always the number to call up. That's 888-623-3646. You can reach me right here on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Stephen A. You can reach me on my Twitter page, twitter.com slash Stephen A. Smith. You can call in at 888-623-3646. That's Triple Eight Mad Dog Six. I'm here from 1 to 3 p.m. every day, Eastern Standard Time. Your phone calls and more up in a minute. Remember, Andy Reid, head coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, is coming on the show as well. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, Sirius XM, Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82. I see y'all still on Facebook with me. Thank you so much. Um, Walk Williams, Cowboys won't make the playoffs. I hear you. John Cab Williams, how about them Cowboys, please? Kent Demiglio, what's up? I say yes, great opening segment. Appreciate you, bro. Michael Wilkins, Stephen A., would you ever coach a basketball team? No, but I'd be the president of basketball operations. I'd do that. Marco Yates, Tebow, stop it now, stop it. Anthony Day, since when is success based on awards? You're right about that. That doesn't mean he's not going to be successful. But how are you making that statement while you're still playing? You still got things to accomplish, bro. Coach defenses, Mellow first, ballot Hall of Famer. No. Clarence Branch, great stuff. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Scooter Burns, Cowboy Nation. Yeah. Hopefully y'all win for the first time in 25 years. Brandon Kelly, how about them Broncos? We'll see. Get a quarterback. Joan McCrady, Jim Buss needs to be fired. Who the hell don't know that? Bradley King, Mashiri, we miss Skip. I miss him too. But I love what I'm doing on first take, my man. Brandon Wood, roll! Side. I hear you. Michael Benjamin, were you impressed with Wentz's performance last night? It was a little bit impressive. Let's see if he'll keep it up. Samson Lawrence, more love for Raider Nation. Okay. C.T. Ross, Cowboys are horrible. The whole organization. No argument here. Casius Williamson, Brandon Ingram, make the Lakers the Lakers again. We getting Westbrook. I think Westbrook just said that he's staying in OKC for a couple of more years. Cleveland Fleury, Knicks will win 50 games. I'm thinking 45, but we'll see. Greg Nemo, what do you think of the Falcons this year? Not much, but Julio Jones could easily change that. Rich White, keep speaking the truth. I appreciate you, bro. Michael Powers, nice work. Stephen A., thank you so much. Uh, Tyrone Campbell, what do you think about Michigan? I think Jim Harbaugh is going to handle his business. Y'all take it easy. I got to get on out of here and get back to my radio show. Peace of love.